Okay, I had a chance to work on your design a little bit and wanted to walk you through what I have changed based on the measurements I took. Starting in the main part of the kitchen, we have a piece of wainscot panel here, left of the refrigerator. We have a refrigerator wall cabinet that is 24 inches deep, but this panel is 30 inches deep. So there'll be a little void behind this wall, which is common. I make the panel 30 inches deep because most refrigerator carcasses are 29 inches before the doors and the doors are another 5 inches or so. Doors have to go beyond the panel in order for the doors to function. Then next to a refrigerator panel I like to put a bank of drawers. If I put a door a drawer and a door, the door swings open and hits this side panel, but if I do all drawers, they just pull straight out. So that's the thinking there. I think that might be a little different than what you have. If you want to go back to a drawer and a door, we can do that. But I like having drawers next to a stove. Even though you have a freestanding stove, this is showing a slide-in stove. I don't think you have gas either, but that's what I selected quickly. Then we have a wall cabinet. The special thing about this wall cabinet is I've extended the rail over here so this door can swing open past 90 degrees without hitting this panel. Gives that door a little more wiggle room. But this rail, extended rail, does not change the storage of this cabinet. So there is storage. The storage uh, goes uh, in back of this rail. So you don't lose any storage on this cabinet by doing that modification. And we have a microwave, microwave and a microwave cabinet. 12 inch cabinet. This is an 18 inch wide. This is a 12. I tried to make these two cabinets the same size but it ended up giving me a really funny 3 inch space on the, from the right side to this l super lazy Susan cabinet and I so I got rid of that. Then we have an what they call an easy reach cabinet. Let's take a look at this. So this is uh this has two hinges. There's a set of hinges here. A set of hinges here, so this is a what they call a bifold door. That's right there in the corner on the wall. Then we have another wall cabinet, and I've put a decorative door style on the side. I think you wanted that. At the moment, I have the pull-out trash here with a drawer on top. This is a double pull-out trash. Very common 36 wide sink base, dishwasher, cabinet with a drawer and two doors. Behind these two doors are roll-out trays, two of them. Then I put wainscoting on the, on the end of this and a uh, baseboard molding down the bottom. You'll see the same treatment in the island the base molding looks like this. Then the other thing we have, you might notice, is uh, done crown molding. You can see it going to the ceiling. Got um, a little fascia board right there, and then a two and a half inch crown. So the fascia board is used to get me to the ceiling and nail the crown to the fascia board. Then you also might notice a little detail right here. 
we can add it or delete it but it looks nice and I got a feeling you kind of like the idea of adding bling but it's a blinging kind of, blinging kind of thing um, it's a piece of um, light shield that's what they call it the crown molding looks like this so a fairly simple crown to go with a fairly simple door shaker door style the light shield where did that go looks like this while I have it the door style looks like this I'm gonna give you a copy of this page so you can review it but there's two different options there's a door style that has a veneered center panel or a door style called bon Bonita. This one's called Bridgeport. This one's called Bridgeport. Then they have another one called Bonita that has the center style made out of solid wood. So I'm going to price out both. I think I have been pricing out Bridgeport. And then the other option is this five piece drawer front. One, two, three, four, five. That's why they call it five piece. It's five pieces of wood, as opposed to a slab drawer front. So I'm going to price that out as well as an option. And I have that same decorative door treatment on either side of this wall cabinet right here. And I will be, I want to, in order to do that decorative door style, I wanted to fall short of this pine beam, I guess we're going to call it. So you can see there's a little gap there, a little gap there, next to the beam. The island, at the moment, you'll see that there's Wayne's coating on each side. More of that base molding here. We have, we might you might end up wanting to change the configuration of this, but the, how it was originally is I believe we had three drawers, two drawers, a drawer, and a door. We can certainly change this now. As far as the sizing of the island, this island, the countertop, is 90, uh, excuse me, 79 and a half. I know you wanted 7 feet, 84 inches. This is 79 and a half inches by 38 and a half inches. The reason why I did that is because from these handles to the edge of this door is just shy of 40 inches. And that's comfortable. Um, this brings the island about 6 inches to that step. So I think that's good. Um, now we can make this island a little deeper this way, but you have about 55 inches from here to here, which is very comfortable. So I don't really see a great reason to increase the depth of this. I think 38 and a half is good. But you can let me know if you prefer a bigger island. I don't want to make it too much longer though because I don't want to get too close to that step and I want to make sure there's plenty of room around the refrigerator. Now here's the doggy storage over here. You got a drawer, two doors, and behind these two doors are going to be rollout trays. At least that's what I would do. If you don't want the rollout trays then we can get rid of them. I've also made this cabinet 21 inches deep instead of 24. 
Another common depth is 18 inches deep, but I felt the 24 just kind of felt like it was stuck out there in the middle of nowhere, so I just reduced it a little bit. I did have trouble reading my own writing, but I think you have 33 and a half inches of space here. So maybe you can double check that for me. Sometimes my threes look like a seven. I don't think you had 37 inches there. And over here, we got uh, wall cabinets prepared for glass. I will give you price to add the glass, but it's probably going to be more cost effective to get the glass locally in Georgetown. I suspect there's some place close that can add the glass for you. We have that same light shield at the bottom of the wall cabinets. This crown molding doesn't need fascia because you get a vaulted ceiling. But these cabinets are actually a little taller. These are 33, wa 33 tall uppers. The kitchen has 30 inch uppers in order to accommodate the crown molding. given the size, the height of your ceiling. This cabinet here, I made 18 inches deep. These cabinets here are 16 inches deep. Wall cabinets are always 12 inches deep. We've got flush toe kicks here to give it more of a furniture look. I opted not to do any paneling on the sides of these cabinets, so they'll just be a flat finished end. I think that is the majority of the design. I'm going to give you some color renderings. Looks like I got a toe kick over here. If you want me to change this to a flush toe kick, let me know. But I can see maybe you standing in front of this cabinet a little more often then over on this side. Let me know if I'm on the right track. And if I have things just the way you want it. If I do, then I can figure out the math.